Hello, hello, microphone check, one, two, one, two. Let me adjust my picture here, guys. All right, let me pop out the chat room, pop out the chat, and... Hello, microphone check. If you're watching live and you can hear me, let me know how my audio sounds. Picture looks pretty good. All right. Okay, hello, my name's Chris Legospi. Today is uh, Thursday, May 14th. And today is going to be the uh, continuation of the uh, poster design, poster comp illustration process. Oh, excuse me, I had to get a drink of water there. And the um, in the last video, um, we covered the uh, construction of the comp, taking a photo reference and then turning it into um, something that we could uh, draw from and use to make our final drawing. So today I'm just gonna do a couple drawing techniques, couple drawing process. Um, and there's really, um, there's infinite ways to do this, um, but uh, what I'm going to cover is the two most common ways and we're going to use um, is to take our our comp either a photo comp photo reference or um, a smaller thumbnail drawing or a combination of both and then transfer it to our final paper so in this case I used um, I took the photo comp from yesterday from last episode and transferred it with um, a projector that's just one of the tools you can use um, you can also use um, a uh, tracing paper it's another common technique so this is that same photo comp but I printed it out and this I would also uh, you can just put some trace paper on top or vellum if you want to get some more a thicker paper and have more effects. So, um, and because for this I wanted to do it on, on tone paper, I decided to use a projector. And you can also print out on tone paper as well. Um, let's see. And this is ordinary, what's well, actually really nice, really nice card stock, cover stock. It's a pretty heavyweight cover stock. I um, I picked it up at the stationery store near near me, so it's 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 basically office paper. It's not it's not any special kind of art paper, but it's really nice and smooth. I, I really like it. I was playing with it earlier, and um, the canvas size I have is uh, six by nine inches. In centimeters, it's. Uh, 22, 15 by 22 centimeters. <clears throat> and I've I transferred the drawing with the projector so far. And now what I'm going to do is flesh out the drawing using pencil. So forgive me for the noise. You may hear my pencil sharpener. All right, so what I'm going to do is just tighten up this drawing and then eventually try to take it to a finish. And if I have time, you know, I will, uh, I will uh, do uh, tracing paper over this little sketch. This is the uh, the second uh, genre I'm going to do. It's a it's a poster concept for a uh, quiet place. So just show two different ways. This is my preferred way. Um, if I'm working from home. 
I like to use a projector. Also, other all the illustration greats use projectors, especially if you want to work big. If you um, I mean, if you think about the uh, the greatest poster artist, arguably the greatest ever, uh, Drew Struzan, you know he does these giant um, you know life size illustrations in there. He has to use a projector to 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 make his drawing fit the the illustration board he uses. So that's just one advantage of using projector. But tracing paper is, is totally fine. Vellum is totally fine. Um, other greats like Mike Butkus and uh, Mark Westermo, who was um, one of my uh, mentors, he uh, also used tracing paper and vellum quite often. But for some reason, I just love I love office paper. I, I don't know why. I just love it. I think because it's it's so it looks so clean and so smooth and white office paper is such a nice bright white. I don't know, and it's cheap. It's cheap. It's easy to find. I really enjoy office paper. So let me flesh out this drawing. This is with the projector. And if you just join me, or uh, if you're watching for the first time, I'm going to uh, illustrate a movie poster concept. This is for a, you know, fictional TV show starring Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is going to be the... Uh, the main uh, character and and if you're making a portfolio this is a great way to um, this is a great thing to put in your portfolios a comedian or do a comedy poster design it shows a lot of it shows you can draw likeness and expression and in this case hands I wanted to include a lot of hands in this so let's get started here And if it's your first time watching, and you're watching live when you're watching on replay, um, comment below. Let me know um, where you are located. Where are you watching from? What time is it for you? I'm currently in Asia. I'm in Thailand right now. It's 11 at night. So I'm going to draw the... Uh, I'm looking at my computer here, and I got... Uh, Gonna pull up this. I'm gonna work top down because this top one is smaller. So I'll grab this top one. Do I have it here? No, middle one here. All right, here we go. Now, uh, this is really small, actually. I'm going to have to do a lot of uh, pencil sharpening. And what I would like to do is... Um, is use a um, pen, a really fine point gel pen. Now, um, if you notice um, my initial uh, projection, right? I didn't. It's not very tight. It's kind of like very rough and blocked in. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to. Uh, leave a lot of room for me to interpret the drawing and add my own uh, spin to it and my own uh, character.
I have also done um, drawings where I projected, uh, you know, very, very tight, and um, it can look, it can look successful, but for this I wanted to have a little bit of more room for, I don't want to say error, but more room for, um, Because you can you can do this uh, poorly, um, especially if you don't know how to draw. You know, I um, obviously I have to address the uh, the big uh, elephant, right? Which is 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 this cheating? You know, <laughs> this is a it's a. Right, oh, it's, it's cheating, you're tracing, right? No. Well, you, um, you, you can use tracing paper and projection and still come up with a horrible drawing. That's, I think we've all seen them, we've all experienced that. So, um, and for me, I, um, I, um, I never, um, uh, encourage my students to use tracing paper or a projector. I don't encourage anyone to do it unless they um, can draw it freehand. So I always I always uh, make sure that um, if someone's working with me, I always make sure that they could draw freehand if, if they need to because they're, you know, in, in, in my line of work, when you're uh, doing this professionally, you, you won't always have a photography. You're going to have to invent quite a bit the face uh, obviously will will, will be um, uh, heavily referenced, which is which is good. You want that, but but yeah, I mean you you can do this and get terrible results that look look very bad. At the at the worst, it can look stiff, right? At the worst, at the you know best case scenario, if you do a bad projection or bad tracing, it could look uh, just looks stiff and ro robotic, which uh, you know I, I'm, I'm guilty of. You know, wow, this is so uh, small. I'm almost tempted. Uh, almost tempted to draw um, three of these full size full size paper and then and then use Photoshop to construct uh, the finish which is not a bad idea actually actually oh no this is backwards this arm is this image is flipped And of course, it has to be said. Well, why, Chris? Why? Why would you use a projector? Why would you use tracing paper? It comes down to time. That's the bottom line. Um, to to this drawing, you know, this drawing alone, just the placement of correct shapes and proportions, um, that just takes an incredible amount of time. And you know, when you're when you're on the job, you uh, you just don't have the luxury of time. That's number one. And number two, if you want that photorealistic look and you want it uh, quickly, um, that's another reason to uh, use these mechanical tools to transfer your drawing.
reason why I wanted to um, use um, I wanted to see if I could use do everything on um, without using Photoshop so I tried to do my best to uh, to use 100% traditional here because I know that's the look that's in demand it's just something that so small. Something that's uh, Okay, yeah, that head is so tiny. Let me see if I have better luck with this one. That head is a little too small, I feel. Let me bring up the uh, middle drawing. And there's also... Um, Also, a lot of um, There's an advantage to uh, uh, this way of working, where you uh, you know you almost have to draw the same drawing multiple times. See, right now I'm uh, doing the. Uh, doing the line art in pencil. Later I'm going to uh, go over it in, a, in pen. Then I'm probably going to shade it with a colored pencil. And that repetition is really valuable, I found. That's one thing I saw, I don't know if you if you're watching, uh, if you're watching live or in the replay, comment below if you have seen uh, Drew Struzan's Hellboy documentary making of the Hellboy poster with Drew Struzan. I probably watched that thing like a hundred times now, and it's um, one of the things I notice about his process is that he'll draw the same head for the same exact illustration a dozen times over and over and over again. And each one just looks, gets a little bit better, a little bit tighter, a little bit better likeness. So there's a lot of value 
in that. Even this, this figure is, feels so tiny to me, man. Let me, uh, give me one more, this last one. Maybe use this, yeah, that's helpful. So let me take a break and, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, draw this one next, right here. Let me see if you have any questions here. Whoa! I'm just uh, checking on the chat room. Well, take a little uh, Q and A break here. Hello, Justin. Hello, Nathaniel. Hello, London, UK. Chin asks, have you used two, mi two millimeter leads a long time ago? I don't really like them, but uh, Mike Butkus likes them, so yeah, I love graphite, actually. Um, for some reason, I just love the uh, the feeling of the wood, and I like the, the woodless ones are nice, um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of graphite. The two millimeter ones are weird. The, the way they sharpen is, is I don't know, I, maybe I, I should give it another chance. Nathaniel says, for projection, use one of those opaque projectors. 
like autograph or like box. Oh, you mean the actual projector I use? Oh, Jawad says HD. Yes, sorry, I think it's a combination. Jawad asks about HD. It's a combination of... Um, I should just zoom in, actually. That's what I'll do. I'll just zoom in right now. I use this little mini projector. This one's, this one works okay. It's expensive as hell. Um, but there's so many, there's so many, um, and what I don't like about this one, it doesn't have a tripod mount. I used to have one that had a tripod mount that you can put on a ball head. So, um, this is so weird. Maybe it does, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't really like this one. It's it's nice. It's super expensive and it's missing a tripod head. I don't like that. There's so many good projectors in the hundred dollar range. Mark says, do you find it hard to come up with original creative compositions when you're in an environment where you do expect it to turn out a lot of drawings in a day? Um, that's a great question, Mark. Uh, no, not really, uh, because I come to the table with. Well, you know, I, my background is, you know, I, I, uh, Mark asked if I find it hard to come up with original compositions and stay creative when you're in a, when you're in a studio environment. And f for me, I, uh, you know, I, in a way I come from an academic fine art background, so I, I don't do it that much now, but you know, I used to figure draw a lot, two, three, four times, five, sometimes five days a week. I would go out landscape painting two, three times a week, sometimes more. You know, sometimes I would go landscape painting every day. So those kind of things, the academic tradition keeps me very, keeps me very fresh for me. You know, in a lot of ways, I consider myself a, you know, at, at my core, I'm a, uh, I'm a fine art painter. I just, I just like posters because they, they pay a lot and I get paid to draw. So, you know. Uh, what, what what can you do? <laughs> I, I like I like to draw. I would be drawing Dave Chappelle anyway. So if you're gonna pay me, you know, you're gonna pay me to do it. <laughs> Sign me up. But but no, I think Mark Mark makes it, brings up a great point. How how do you stay creative? And for for me, there's two things. One is um, is um, you know, I, I'm, you know, as an academic guy, I, I'm constantly drawing from observation. So I always, um, you know, always drawing the figure, still life or landscape, either one of those things. Uh, photo is like my last choice, but uh, it, that also helps. So that really helps me more. Um, or I'm constantly sketching. I think even, um, you know, a lot of the greats in history, they always say sketch. So, um, that's always one way to stay fresh, is to keep, bring your sketchbook with you wherever you go. Carlos says, in his book, Drew says, it takes him a week to modify changes from his comps. Yeah. Yeah, a big finish takes, yeah, they, they, they you know, they get a couple months for those. I saw Hellboy poster to as well as Drew Street and documenting his career from record. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. Justin asks, what's the ratio you're doing to comp drawing six by nine? Yes, six by nine inch. It's called Drew the Man behind it. Yeah, that's a great position too. So let me zoom in. Let me try to zoom in here. Because um, how's that? It's a little better. Okay, it's a little better. I'm still using my. Uh, I uh, I ordered a um, 
Um, I ordered a HD capture card for my, I have a proper video camera now. Uh, but it's still in the mail. These things are on back order. Yeah, I, you know, streaming streaming hardware is is um, lots of people are streaming now, so it's hard to get the hardware. But I, I did order it like two weeks ago. Actually, I ordered a um, 4K capture card because I wanted to do upgraded video, and um, it's still waiting. And they told me it's gonna be another two weeks. I'm like shit. But w w uh, for sure, it'll get here by the end of this month. Hopefully, that's the plan. And um, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll be doing proper HD streams. And I also... Um, I also made an appointment to have my internet upgraded. I was going to have a technician come in and upgrade my internet. But the damn stupid COVID restriction in my apartment... They won't let technicians come in. So fucking frustrating. So this happened like a week ago, still waiting for uh, these damn restrictions. Ugh. So yeah, um, anyway, I, I am, uh, I, I, I have, I, I, am, I am working on getting an up, upgraded stream. Um, I already, I, I invested in the, in, in the hardware, it's just so it's just waiting now for everything to get it installed. But yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, joining me live. You know, I really appreciate the uh, the feedback and the comments. It's super helpful. Yeah, right now my internet is um, is not optimal for streaming, so that's probably why the um, that's probably why the uh, signal is so weak. But um, that's okay. I think we'll um, it gives us a chance to. Uh, to, to get together, I think that's a, that's a really cool, get to, uh, talk about drawing, hope, hopefully learn a few things. Even this drawing is, feels so tiny to me. I don't know why. Yeah, you know, I um, <laughs> the, the more I uh, I draw this, I'm like, man, I should have I should have worked bigger. <laughs> Just I should have did a bigger drawing. This is so tiny. Oh, but what else? The, uh, um, I did a George Carlin in my portfolio uh, a couple years ago. It's still on my website, a George Carlin poster design I, I did for my portfolio. And uh, I did that with uh, three separate drawings that I just constructed in Photoshop, put it together in Photoshop. So uh, probably moving forward, I will do that for these comedian ones.
this. I made his head too blocky. I have this habit of boxing everything. It's, it's a good habit. It's a little too blocky. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to make this uh, jacket the same for both. So comment below if you're a uh, if you're a new or old Dave Ch Chappelle fan. He um, I just recently caught his uh, recent like 2019 I think. Oh yeah, it has to be 2019. Those newest uh, specials he did, man, they're he's like back back in form. He was. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I've seen some of his his uh, comedy from like 2014 and things like that. They were they weren't. I didn't think they were as good as his uh, when he became super famous on that on uh, Comedy Central, his uh, his TV show. But yeah, he's like he's uh, he's back on. Uh, Good form, really, really, uh, really enjoy his, uh, his latest, uh, specials. So I know he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be on TV quite a bit. I, pr I predict, I could be wrong. So let me go back to this one. Let me go back to this middle one. I'm not happy with this. No, I don't need that. I wish I could. I wish I could zoom in. I think this is as a... Uh, as close as the camera can get. Sorry guys. I know it's a little tiny here. Doesn't feel right in the nose. Ooh, this girl is tiny.
I'm not going to get very far today. It sucks. I was hoping to at least drop in some tone. Let me try to get this last one here. Okay, let's see. Oh my goodness, that is teeny tiny. Ooh. The eyebrows are too thick. Okay, the eyebrows helped. It helps. I think I will change the shape of that. There's a bit of a rim light here. It's making an interesting shape. And these two. Okay, that's better. I think in general I made his face a little too fat. better hmm. I'm gonna do uh, ink drawing over this I just like the look of ink I'm gonna use ink and marker to give it like a really nice eye contrast almost like a comic book look well at least I can get a shape And I'm using a, um, it's a gel pen I found here. Um, it has a super fine point, 0.28, which is fantastic. I would love to get a ballpoint that gets this fine, but I haven't found one. I think there's an artist named uh, Luis Sanchez. He's like a fine artist from New York. He made his own pen. He's known for his beautiful ballpoint pen drawings. And he made his own pen. I believe they're in uh, point, point 0.25 ballpoint. I 
And quite frankly, this is probably not the smartest thing to do in terms of editing, because obviously I cannot edit once I once this pen is is in it's it's in there, but um, I just like the look. I like the look, and it forces me to commit to a shape, you know. And it's just something that uh, I've always enjoyed the look of pen. I mean, I'm going to use pencil too, but uh, probably it would be smarter to you know. So you do it 100% in graphite or pencil, that would be perfectly valid. And then just bring it into the computer and use um, uh, levels and things to uh, adjust the contrast for, for the final image. Check my comp here. Okay. I'm trying to check where this line is. I should probably draw that in before. <laughs> okay, let me draw this line in using my ruler here. You can tell I'm in, uh, outside of the US because I'm using centimeters now. <laughs> so funny. The reason why I'm drawing this line is that I'm going to put some tone, put some tone behind him, and this one will have some tone as well. I'm kind of eyeballing. <laughs> I don't really have a, a game plan. 
I'm just kind of eyeballing where this line will go. It's about seven centimeters. And actually, you know what would be cool? You can extend down, right? You can extend his legs down to do like a nice gradient fade. That would be nice too. Same with this one. That would be very interesting. So make this a solid shape, but then gradient up. You know what I mean? Solid shape. Because this will be black, this will be white on it. That won't work there. But this could work here. But anyway, it's something that I just discovered in this process. Oh my god, running out of time again. Man, I keep going. Uh, I'm trying to keep these things around an hour. Oh boy. I thought I would get a lot farther than this, but oh well. This is, uh, I'm going to break for questions in like five minutes, so. If you have any specific questions about the process, I uh, won't get to finish it on this stream. But basically what I'm doing is just going over my pencil. It's exactly like um, what a comic book inker would do. It's exactly what, um, um, well, I mean, any uh, uh, animator, any illustrator type work, you know, you do your pencil, then you just go over it with a uh, pen or, uh, you know, you clean it up in pencil. I'm cleaning up my initial pencil line. That's all I'm doing. Cleaning it up. In this case, I'm making a shape. My next pass will be marker. Once I have this, I'm going to put a layer of uh, marker, probably a sharpie. Again, it's not very, uh, it's not a very traditional art tool, sharpie. But I don't know. I just I enjoy sharpie. That's what these shapes are. These little shapes I'm drawing are going to be filled with the black, most likely. So I did them in pencil first just to get a feel for them and to get, um, so I can design them, right? Because uh, yes, I'm using reference. Yes, I use a projector, but, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm still making very, very conscious choices of these shapes. Very, so I'm still designing as I draw. I'm designing as I go. I'm not, I'm not I'm blindly copying. And this, you know, that happens when you draw from reference freehand, and that certainly can happen when you draw with uh, uh, mechanical tools, transferring tools like projectors and tracing paper and grids you know grid another way another way to transfer a drawing um what was i going to say which is why going going back to what i was saying is that um um i would not encourage anyone to use these tools until you can draw it freehand. Because once you can draw it freehand, you know, you, you make those decisions like, okay, you know, this, this button is here, but should I leave it out, you know? This button is in the photo, should I draw a total outline on it, you know? This button is here, this shape, you know, can I design that shape? This shadow shape is in the reference, but I could change it and alter it. Same with the folds. You know, all of these decisions, this shape of this highlight, he has a highlight on his head. Do I merely copy it or do I design it to fit my needs? So all of those decisions. Do I do it in pen and ink? Um, I'm going to do this in pen and ink, then I'm going to break here. This will probably be the last thing I do. But that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show in this video, just a couple ways <laughs> to use, to transfer your drawing and how to clean up your drawing. I do it with pencil and pen. 
Um, I've also done it with uh, just straight colored pencil. I've done it with uh, colored pencil and pen. This is graphite to pen. Uh, so lots of ways to do it. I would definitely experiment. I mean, for for most people, I think graphite is a great place to start. I always encourage uh, students or anyone who wants to learn uh, drawing to just start uh, drawing with graphite. I think we all start drawing with graphite. It's the most common tool we have when you when you go to school. You have the pencil. Probably the first pencil you picked up was a graphite. So most people have access to them, and uh, they're great. They're very flexible, and they can erase. So they're great for uh, they're great for learning. I don't know how I'm going to do this one. This little tiny one. And I think one more pass here. There's a nice... Uh... And that should about cover it. The rest will be done with... Uh... Uh, this guy is very thin. So after that, I will fill this in with black. I'll probably use this. I will, I'll, I will ink all of these and use this. Or uh, I like... Uh, where's my pen? This. Probably this too, Sacro Microns are, are my favorite felt tip pen. Also like Stettler, is it Faber Castell? They make beautiful felt tip pens. Probably these are all felt tip, dries real fast. So yeah, let me uh, well break here for questions. I really appreciate you guys joining me live. Sorry I couldn't get too much done. Man, I was, uh, but whatever, you know. That's that's the beautiful thing about about drawing, right? So this will probably take me probably three hours. To um, to just do the inking, so that'd be that'd be great. Another three or four hours to finish it. All right. So... <laughs> Nathaniel says, "Never seen that kind of projector." Yeah, these new uh, crop of mini projectors are great. I would get one that has a, that can mount to a ball head. I saw one, I believe Sharper Image was a really nice one. It was around a hundred dollars, probably eighty dollars now. Um, yep, um, waiting for my 5K, 4K card. Running shoes got stuck. <laughs> Damn, Carlos. Oh, Dutch is here. Hello, Dutch. Would you normally draw so small for a movie poster? They're usually very large. Uh, yeah, I've never done a finish. I think um, I am only in the dark. Merge in the dark. I, um, um, this is for a portfolio piece. But um, for I have done jobs on... Um, uh, on paper and I did them a little bit bigger than this slightly full size but I did the finish in Photoshop which I'll be doing tomorrow but yeah I've never done a um, a poster finish I would do it on much bigger paper I think for much bigger paper yeah this is a good question Carlos says nutty professor yeah oh hello Christy Campo yeah, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Nathan, thank you. Yes, I've been. Hello, 
Jawad asks, do you recommend having my own website so clients can view my portfolio? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would always, I would always buy yourname.com if at all possible. Yourname.com is the best website. I think the second best is, is a blog spot. Um, your name, because Blogspot is free and it's super easy to use, but it's also, I mean, I, I got hired from Blogspot. Ku Cha is a friend of mine, very successful poster artist. He still uses a <laughs> Blogspot. <laughs> but yeah, I would own yourname.com. I would, I would stay away from DeviantArt for sure. ArtStation looks nice. I, I'm, I, you can get work with an ArtStation portfolio, I have no doubt. But you know, I, I think long term, you definitely want to own your your name dot com for sure, or your name dot your name art dot com something like that. They should have Zoom on webcams. Yeah, I'm using my iPhone. Um, Jawad says nice shadow mapping. Yeah, oh yes, yeah, it's shadow mapping. Yeah, thank you. And specifically for the blacks, so this will be probably a black. Well, I'll use one thing I like about Sharpie is I'm going to fill this in with a Sharpie is that Sharpie is not 100% black, actually. I did. This is kind of the effect that I want. I don't know if you guys can see this. That Sharpie plus the colored pencil on this paper looks great. So Sharpie is not 100% black. But then um, I'll go over it. I'll ink it with Sharpie and then go over it with pencil to get to get a range of blacks it's it's great i would say on a scale let's let's do that now oh here it is here's here's a sharpie here's a sharpie and you guys can see so if you 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 can leave a little bit of you know that's not a pure black right um but you can go pure black, you know, like if you do Sharpie plus colored pencil, you can get a really rich black. And, you know, on camera, you can't see it, but to me, it's, it's, not, it's not even close to a pure black. You can even use like a proper felt tip pen. These get really black. So this is a, a proper felt tip pen. That is super black. Right there. I don't know if you can see on camera. This is Sharpie. That's what I like about Sharpie. It's kind of like on a scale of one to ten, ten being pure black. This is even this even still it can go blacker than this. I'll go over it with pencil. So this would be an eight, a seven or an eight. Um They should have Zoom webcam, show mapping. Richie paints, hello. Christy says, highly recommend website. Yes, agree. Richie's uh, painting as we draw. That's awesome. The video is blurry. Oh, sorry, Christy. I think it's my uh, my internet connection. I, I just did a rant on my internet. I, um, I'm waiting for the technician to come, but there's, unfortunately, there's... There's restrictions in my building, so technicians can't come right now. I, I did, but I did order upgraded internet. It's coming. Are you considering type as you compose the image? That's a great question. Jawad asks about type. Uh, no, but I did in my little thumbnail. Where's my little thumbnail? Where's my sketchbook? Oh, can't find my sketchbook thumbnail it's here somewhere but I did consider the type in my little four inch thumbnail Carlos asks would you Stedler is the best graphite pencil I have history with them and Derwent I do not like Stedler pencil at all they're good um, my favorite graphite pencil is Faber-Castell but compared to Faber-Castell, I do not like these at all. The only reason why I'm using this is um, it's all I can find in Thailand. I currently live in Thailand, and I can't find, yeah, I can't find the stuff that I like. If I was in the U.S., I would get Faber-Castell for sure. 
Mm. I heard a tip for eyes. Oh, Dutch uh, asks, um, getting pupils of the eyes right. Oh, man, that is brutal. That is brutal. I, um, you know, uh, I, let me get back to you on that, Dutch. What I do is I try to match the width of the white. I started paying, this might be helpful, Dutch. I started paying more attention to the white. By the pupil, do you mean the placement? So let's say... Um, in this example, he's looking left, right? So first, I think more important than the pupil is the actual shape of the person's eye, at least for me, right? To get the likeness, to get the shape of the, the, the opening anyway. Because, you know, the lid has so much nuance. People's lids look like that. Some people's lids look like that. Some people's lids look like that. You know what I mean? Some people's lids look like that. People's lids look like that. So to me, the most important thing is getting the shape of the the opening, making sure the lid looks looks right. Now to place the pupil, obviously, um, let's say he was looking here. What I would do is not pay attention so much to the pupil. I mean, this is important. Um, but also this, this ratio, how much of the white do I see from left to right and right to left? Because the white also will not only give you placement, but the emotion, right? If your eye has same placement of the eye, but less white, that's a much different expression, right? So that's more important to me. I hope that helps. I um, hope that helps try to find the distance here. Oh yeah, merge after dark uh, echoed the same thing. Uh, draw the whites. Yeah, uh, not necessarily draw the white, but pay attention to the shape of the white. That's a great tip. Does mapping considered as fine? Mark? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, shadow mapping is. Um, do you mean uh, projection or shadow mapping? Shadow mapping is. Um, that's it's, it's as old as realism gets. Is the shadow map, and all you have to do is look. You can look to any Barg book. A Barg uh, was one of the first to make that book public. Uh, the te academic teaching and the Barg, Barg book is basically this shadow mapping. So, um, academic drawing. We have fine art in terms of academic drawing. Yeah, shadow mapping is is academic drawing. Principles look the same. They take time to harness. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you think about illustration... American illustration really is the continuation of European academic drawing. Um, it moved from, uh, I believe it was Bridgman was one of the first to bring it over. Bri well, I mean, Sargent, um, Sargent was a famous American, but he didn't really teach, right? Bridgman came from Europe and started teaching in New York. And then from New York, it spread all over the, to the country. Um, so in a lot of ways, modern day American illustration is continuing the realistic tradition in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, um, that's not 100% true. Um, Richie asked a question about mindset anxiety. Apparently people tell me I'm good, but... Oh, that's, well, that's a tough question. Richie asked, anxiety about posting your work. You know, I, I, I still do it to this day, too. You know, there's times where I'm like, oh, this is garbage. This is hot trash. Um, how did I personally get over that? Well, you have to, um, you have to be a little bit thick-skinned, especially in the commercial world. 
you cannot work in the commercial world unless you, you know, people are going to tell you you're hot trash, and and it may it may be true. <laughs> That's a, it may be true. Your work may be hot trash. So um, that may be a good thing. You know, um, I just thought of a story, Richie. Uh, when I was, uh, I grew up in a small town in this, in America called uh, Pinellas Park, Florida. Right? It's a, it's a small town in a small state in, in the U.S. And uh, growing up there, you know, I, um, I was like the hotshot artist. You know, I had a big ego. I thought I was, I thought I was the man, because there wasn't anybody. You know, I was like the kid. Growing up, I was always the the best artist in school. I was the kid that everybody asked to draw Transformers, He-Man. Everybody would ask me to draw He-Man and Ninja Turtles. You know, for for my generation. But it wasn't until I came to my first Comic Con. I believe I was like, how old was I? I think I was like 20 or 21 or something. I was like a young punk with a big ego. And then um, I went to Comic-Con and I just got crushed because I went to San Diego, Comic-Con's in San Diego, and I just saw the level of artists there and I was like, holy crap, I'm like, I'm like hot trash compared to these guys. So I, that really humbled me. And I went to a portfolio review um, it, I, I'll never forget this. It was a uh, Warner Brothers portfolio review, and they were interviewing for Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond, the Bruce Tim one. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get this. I'm so good. But when I got there, the, the art director, he just basically told me I was hot trash to my face in a nice way. And I was like, and looking back, that was one of the best humbling moments of my life. Because if he hadn't told me I was hot trash, I would not have known I was hot trash. So, um, I, it, anyway, Richie, to answer your question, um, you got to show your work and you got to get beat up. If your work, I think you face, you're, you're fearful that people will tell you your work is hot trash, but you may need to hear that, uh, you know, and it may be, it may be true. You may need to hear it. So <laughs> it, it was true for me. If I hadn't had gotten humbled and trashed by, by a credible expert, then I would not be here today. So, so then w w one thing I think that may help you, Richie, is that um, is that um, uh, if someone tells you you're hot trash and they're not a credible expert, don't, don't worry about them. Um, get 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 feedback from an expert first, and then and then they'll that'll be a good place to start. Jawad says, hope that answers your question. Jawad says, should I consider type in my workflow? No, um, y yes and no. If you're doing a portfolio piece, I would say, kind of not really. Yeah. Yes, yeah, let's leave it at that. Yes, yes, you should. But I think more important than that is um, can you do a beautiful face with likeness? I think that's the number one thing to get across in your portfolio. Oh, Dutch says drawing Michelle Yao. Yeah, she's she's easy and tough. She's I believe she, she's becoming a big star in American Hollywood. So, um I'm really happy for her. She's, she's, she's got a, she's, in my opinion, she's attractive, but she has a beautiful face to draw, Michelle Yao, and she's a fucking legend. That woman is an absolute legend in Asian cinema. Absolute legend. Um, she rightfully deserves to be a star in, in Hollywood, in my opinion. I am constantly working on your principles, copying your works. Oh, thank you, Chin. Yeah, and don't copy me. Copy guys that I copied, like uh, David Grove. And um, Wyeth, the Wyeth brothers, Line Decker, obviously, but probably David Grove is my mo biggest influence right now. And uh, I really like a guy named Ben Oliver. I freaking worship the ground Ben Oliver walks on right now. So uh, I, I spent like a few weeks copying his stuff. So um, yeah, always copy great artists. And I'm actually next week. I'm gonna do a whole series on master copy. So I really appreciate you bringing that up, Chin. Justin says, um, "You ever use Copic markers for shading or tonal?" Oh God, yes. I love love Prismacolor marker. I like Copic markers too, but they're so damn expensive. Uh, but it, in a lot of ways, Copic is better than Prismacolor. The tones are so beautiful, but man, they they are they cost a lot. They're the most expensive marker, I believe. I'm just like, 
I'm just very nervous to invest in them, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I love, love, love Prismacolor. I believe Prismacolor is the best ratio of quality and value. Prismacolor marker, and I, I fucking can't find them in Thailand, which is so frustrating, but they, I can't find Copics in Thailand. Chin says, how do you get your style? Ender Zorn. Yeah, how did you know? I I used to worship. I did like a whole month of Ender Zorn. Um, um, but you know, Ender Zorn is a 19th century guy, and all 19th century guys are roughly the same for me. I know that's a very broad, ignorant statement, but the philosophy is roughly the same. 19th century European academic art, fine art, is is basically the height of realism, the height of European realism. Um, do you worry about people stealing your art? No way, not at all. Not at all. Um, in fact, it's a compliment. If somebody copies me, I, I take it as the highest compliment. And I'm always evolving too. You know, a lot of people um, would probably say, oh, Chris, why do you teach people these techniques? I bet you a lot of illustrators would not be happy with me if they found out what I was doing. But I'm like, you know what? In six months, I will be doing something else. I'll be using totally different techniques. I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly using new techniques, uh, constantly changing. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy if you copy my work, copy my technique. It's a it's a compliment to me. And I always say, don't copy me. None of what I'm saying I invented. I copy people way better than me. Right now, you know, I like I said, <laughs> David Grove, Drew Struzan. I mean, I I copy. I copied the best of the best, so go, go, go above me. And Jawad says, Chris, you Sketchbook Pro. Yeah, I, I played with Sketchbook Pro. It is great. And also, uh, Procreate is great. You know, I, um, I, I know I talk a lot of shit. It seems like I talk shit about digital, but I, I love, I, I love it all. I, um, so yeah, I'm gonna cut out here guys. I really appreciate you joining me live. If you're watching on replay or if you're watching me for the first time, make sure you to subscribe to my email list, drawwithchris.com slash subscribe. Um, I don't normally um, communicate on YouTube or on social media. I do most of my communication by email. So if you want the latest schedule, um, I, I And I also release uh, free content only to my email subscribers. So drawwithchris.com slash subscribe if you like my work. And tomorrow we're going to meet at the same time. Tomorrow is Friday, Friday, Friday same time at 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, tomorrow I'm going to do Photoshop finishing. Um, so I'm going to finish this drawing or drawing like like this and take it, take it to Photoshop and show you how to take take your drawing and just add the finishing touches. I'm gonna hopefully try to do a couple different examples. I didn't get too far today. Um, so same time tomorrow and then Monday, uh, excuse me, Sunday, I'm gonna do another stream, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific, and that will be, um, we'll, we'll switch topics from posters to um, anatomy, um, proportion. Proportion and then Monday will be designed. So I'm gonna stream pretty much every day except for Saturday At the same time if I do if I have any schedule changes, it'll be um, I'll update you by by email So I really appreciate you guys live or watching on replay and I will catch you on the next stream Thank you for watching and we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye